When I was nine years old, my father taught me, through a special experience, the value of hard work and earning. He wanted to impart to me an appreciation for the uniquely entrepreneurial American mindset that he had observed while in the United States during his Eisenhower Fellowship.5. For two consecutive summers, I was sent to live in Denton, Texas, 60 miles from the Dallas Fort Worth Airport. My father did this for several reasons. 1. He wanted me to learn English. 2. Texas had little in common with the Middle East, other than, I suppose, a profusion of both heat and oil. 3. Texas had no relationship to our family business. And 4. He wanted me to learn what it felt like to be an American kid. So I boarded a plane all by my petrified self and went to live with a family whose language, let alone accent, I could barely understand. In Texas, I learned both English and the fact that there is no such thing as a free lunch. Everyone in the family I lived with, including the kids, had to work. The father was a police officer and a carpenter who loved working with his hands. He carved a wooden camel for me, probably thinking that I'd appreciate his assumption that we Saudis all rode camels in the desert. I had a paper route with two of the kids. Every afternoon, we would sit and roll the papers. If it was rainy, we would put the papers in plastic bags. And then I would ride around on a bicycle and deliver them. Meanwhile, my father's business prospered, and later on he managed to bring more enterprises, and me, into its orbit. I followed in his footsteps and took to the business world enthusiastically. I loved the whole notion of being a businessman, of establishing and growing a company, collaborating with other people, sharing knowledge, and making deals. The first business I built, when I was 19, was a company that specialized in the supply of manufactured stained glass carved gypsum, and other items of Islamic design, the kind you see on buildings and mosques in the Middle East and southern Spain. I felt that there was a niche in that space, and the company grew well until the market flattened, and we exited the business. Although that business was no next big thing, it was certainly a big thing for me. Like my father, I have always had a visceral love of hard work, an appreciation for earning, and a conviction that business can be a powerful force for good in the world. Business is, in fact, crucial for improving it. Why? Because in most countries across the world, the gap between rich and poor is increasing. Youth unemployment is rising, and access to basic services remains a challenge for many. When people lack work or aren't paid a living wage, they get into trouble, they feel adrift and frustrated. They can turn to violence. Take a look at my corner of the world, the Middle East, where young people far outnumber the jobs available. The horrors of violent extremism have arisen, in part, from massive unemployment in Iraq and Syria. I feel deeply that so many problems in the world can be traced to a lack of sufficient, meaningful, decent paying employment. What the world needs now are business models that foster economic growth in a more sustainable and inclusive manner. Companies need to demonstrate purpose and mission beyond creating shareholder value. The fault also lies with basic greed. Getting into business for the sake of merely making money and enriching oneself makes the world much worse, not better. We are all connected. We business people are a crucial part of that mortal, connected island. If we can't think bigger and more expansively, understand that we are all connected, that we are not islands unto ourselves, and transform our models to integrate what is good for every person and the planet in the longer term. The world will remain fragmented and plunge into an even more terrible abyss than it's already facing.